So this is one day before the race. We just picked up the bike from, where, what was the shop called we picked it up from? Miami Beach Bicycle Centre. Miami Beach Bicycle Centre. He really helped us, so we got a bike. What's a um? Got the name already. Hybrid. Hybrid. Got a basket attached to it for the food. Nice comfy seat. Gave us a helmet as well. And um, yeah, so hopefully it will last me the hundred twenty-five to hundred and fifty miles for tomorrow. It's quite a nice little bike as well. So I'm happy with it. You looking forward for the race as well, Andrew? <laughs> yeah we're gonna have all the food we're gonna put muffins and um, waters maybe some buy some food while i'm out and put it all in that little basket i have a backpack on as well and uh, yeah have a little water in there as well so yeah we'll see how it goes <laughs> all right so we've just been to the uh, what do you call it the expo expo and we picked up from Miami, Miami 100, Miami 100 Ultra Race Series hat and the most important, oh wait, show me your um, t-shirt um, It's got a cool, Miami 100. cool ass t-shirt Actually Miami 125 Oh yeah, so basically, don't explain what happens yeah, so basically we looked online and there's an additional 25 miles you can add on to the race. So we was like, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do the next miles. <laughs> so yeah, now it's 125 miles he's gonna be doing. And most important is little bib. So he's number nine. If anyone wants to follow him and see how he goes. But yeah, so now we're just gonna wait for the briefing to start at half six and then they're going to go over all the stuff about the race about what crew members can and can't do so me on a bike um and yeah hope it'll be fun oh we just got it on let's see the back of it it's got a cool ass little hat as well wait we get it on the hat to match <laughs> But yes, we're going to see it goes at half six and then we're like, now. Um, this is our first year also as an official Badwater 135 preferred qualifier. So it's pretty awesome. So. Um, you know, I'm excited to have uh, a nice international uh, contingency we have uh, we have the UK yes Puerto Rico Checkpoints is also shared. So again, we're actually two of the checkpoints are shared. So which ones? You will find out <laughs> as, the race, as the race goes along. Yeah. Mm. So 
had a, a bit of a hectic morning, but the race has started. It's about um, about five past five, I think. Um, basically, yeah, got a like quarter past three. Had food, packed the bags, packed the bike, and yeah, basically in the morning we got here like fifteen minutes before the race, thinking like, oh, we're on time, and then I lost the. Maybe it's not actually a minute, maybe try and flip the camera. Oh, Andrew! <laughs> I don't know if you can see him. It's a bit dark, but basically, yeah, so we got there 15 minutes before, and as the race was getting cold, um, I realised that I lost the um, key for the lock for the bike, so I'm hoping it doesn't get robbed of it. I need to stop anyway. But yeah, here's the setup. We've got a big backpack. Filled with waters, muffins, bars, and then we've got a basket on front. We've decided to buy a cooler bag last night with ice packs in to keep all the water and the muffins cold, so hopefully that should last. Um, yeah, we are started and on our way. I just need to follow them. But, uh, oh yeah, and we also got papers, like um, notes on which way to go for the checkpoints. I got a different one, like a crew one. But I'm not driving, so I just got the normal racers um, paper. So I'm just following everyone basically. <laughs> Should have brought a speaker to blast music for them all, but I forgot. So. Yeah, well, it's now, it's good. The weather's nice. It's a lot cooler than yesterday. So I think everyone is going to be okay until the sun comes out. But yeah, I'll let you know what gets on. I'm actually really enjoying the bike ride. <laughs> Don't know if I'll be enjoying it a bit later on when it gets to like um, after about 100 miles, but <laughs> yeah, up to now, I'm really loving it. It's quite breezy, it's not actually like stuffy and hot. I had to talk really fast then about the whole setup because I didn't want to lose Andrew because I'm trying to follow him and I can't really see much, so um, I'm just trying to find some other white t shirt and a hat and a big crazy beard <laughs> so I don't think it's that hard to distinguish Hi, I've just stopped off I've like a road ahead of everyone don't really know which way I'm going but yeah I'm sorry that I had to speak fast by the way just because the time I started speaking he runs past and then I need to like, ride to catch up with him again but yeah so basically they gave you like a directional card with a little map to show you which way to go to the first checkpoint and then once you get there they'll give you another one then for the next checkpoint I think the first checkpoint is in mile 10 and then after that it's mile 23 I think so yeah they had, a, they had a crew one as I said before but I'm not using that one but yeah so now the bike's been boss I'll have to tag the bike people we've been renting off but they help so much I end up telling me to get a hybrid bike but it's um so it's like road and um road and what you call it mountain but I think I realised with the wheels I need to make sure I don't go in loads of potholes because if I do then I'll um, pop the tyre there's quite a few potholes on this road like so I that is a car there's quite a few potholes on this road I don't know if you can see them like all them little lines so I was riding and it was pitch black and then out of nowhere I just went like right down inside like, this big I was, like, I was like, I didn't have a clue what I rode on, but um, yeah, apart from that, I just need to make sure I don't pop these tyres because I want to make sure that I actually do the 125 or more miles. Um, but yeah, you can see all the cars. They were all the crew cars who were driving past. And there's me on my little bike. <laughs> but I'm enjoying it. We, um, at the start of the race, the, the um, they went over it all, but I couldn't be there because I was stressing trying to find the key in the car, which I couldn't find. So, yeah, hopefully I'll be able to find that. I hope, I'm hoping it'll be in this backpack, but who knows? I'm just waiting for him to come past. Oh, wait, you see him now. He's going to come past any second. Woo! <laughs> well done, guys. Here he is, there's Andrew. <laughs> Yeah, it's a little bit pricey, yeah. I've got, I, you know what, I was riding, it was pitch black, and I was like, why is it so dark? And Andrew was like, you bought flights for your bike, so put them on. I didn't have a clue to put them on, but I've managed now. I've got 
There is it. I've got a little one down there and a big white one. So hopefully I can see where I'm going. <laughs> well done, guys. Yeah, we did go over some bridges then. Here's Andrew. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's like actually quite cool. It was pitch black, and then I was getting sprayed by like someone's grass watering things. I looked up, I didn't even realise like, they're going past like proper mansions. Yeah, that's someone's house and look how many trees they've got and all the blue lights and everything. Um, but yeah, the course is so nice, it's now. Like, what the hell, that's like, you can't really see but that's someone's house. Like, that's their porch. <laughs> it's literally like, you can't even really see on the video, but there's absolutely, the houses here are crazy. So about like um, 7.9 miles in and honestly after about like not even 5 miles my bum is absolutely killing on this seat. I've got um, them bum padded bike cycling shorts on but even with them it's so, it's so painful and I've just realised usually when I run I'll wear like cycling shorts which are a bit like probably about up to there, a bit longer, and otherwise I get rashes between my thighs. But I thought I wouldn't, I wouldn't get that with going on the bike, and I'm wrong. Um, definitely getting a rash coming up, but I'm just not really paying attention to it. So I rode quite ahead of them now, so I can wait a little bit for them to run, but yeah, and I've got a proper helmet head. Amazing. Is this trail? <laughs> like how amazing is this trail? And the tree, it's like a jungle. Go mansions around here. <laughs> it's really You've never seen nothing like it. Imagine having them trees outside your house. <laughs> So we've just passed the um, first checkpoint. Um, yeah, it was actually just really quick. Went, filled his waters up and he's back off again. And now the next checkpoint is at mile 23, I think. We literally just, it's so cool because we're going through like some housing areas where like people live and is literally like non-stop people just running walking cycling like it must be like big running clubs and things because i thought there's another race on i asked him the, the race director and he's like no it's just loads of running clubs around here so it's really good because everyone's literally just getting out there getting after it so it's really nice to see like it must be so motivating if you live around here having all these people out every day you can see the sky my phone's a bit dodgy but it's honestly it's like a jungle mm. like a whole different part of Miami from what we've seen up to now it's amazing Dan and Lynn, I was riding go on the phone at the same time so I can Make more videos. Mm -hmm. 
Sorry. Which way? <laughs> they took someone out. <laughs> Yeah. I don't really understand where I should be riding the bike, but no one's on this, so I'm guessing I can. Absolutely, there he is, getting after it. The scenery is absolutely amazing. So we're turning into Brickell. I think I said that right. The furthest I've ever done on the bike was 13, so I'm officially past the 13 miles point. Here he is. And it's covered, absolutely covered <laughs> in black stuff on the bike. But yeah, so this is all just um, new territorial, I guess, for me because I've never done anything further than 13 miles on a bike. So not long to the second checkpoint, for about five miles. Oh no, sorry, seven miles. We're going over the Miami Bridge to um, get to the second checkpoint and we're literally absolutely over the moon. We were saying that we wanted to go for a run up on, over the Miami Bridge. So he gets to and I get to ride it. Maybe tomorrow or the next day if he feels alright. He could run over it again so I can run over it as well. But literally, we're absolutely over the moon. He's just further behind me. I don't know if you're allowed to stop on the bike lane on a bridge, but how beautiful is that? I can't believe how amazing that is. grams each um he hasn't had no electrolytes yet so i'm probably gonna slide everywhere i'm probably gonna give him some electrolytes at the next aid station in like another three miles see how he feels but right now i just can't see him so i don't know whether i've gone the wrong way or he's gone the wrong way we'll see how it goes oh. 
I can't even cycle back up the hill because oh that hill, the bridge, so it's a long way. So I just have to wait and see if he comes. I think I've gone the wrong way now think about it, so I'm back to me. Day, an update, here he is. I can see him now. I think we both might have gone the wrong way. I'm sure we should be crossing the road, but I'll ask him when he comes over. Um, but yeah. Hi, we've just passed the um, marathon point. We're on 27 miles. Basically, after the um, second station, I decided to go to the toilet and thinking that I'd catch up with them after like two minutes and in the end I ended up losing them so I'd been standing on the corner for about 40 minutes but like lost them, couldn't find them and then just as I was deciding to go and ride um, to the next like point like 30 miles ahead um, he just, just popped out of nowhere, he got lost himself so found him now so he's had another muffin and he's just doing amazing here he is. Nobody cares, work harder. <laughs> I don't know why, but like, I've just noticed he's soaking wet. Well. Like, all his pants are soaked, so I don't know whether he's like, like, drowned himself in some leaf or he's just, I don't know, but he's soaking wet. So I'll have to ask him in a sec and find out what's happened. I've just asked him. Um, why you spy have found him like an hour later, like soaking wet? Because I thought he might have like threw himself in like the um, in the sea or in some um, gator water or something. And <laughs> he's so weird to sweat. Look how wet his pants are. His pants by the way were like green. Look at them. <laughs> we're in downtown Miami. Here we are. We're just getting off, I think we're just past mile 30 and we're just trying to find North East 15th Street. Not too sure. I think we're like on 7th or something, 7th Street. But it's past because we was here the other day, so it's like going down memory lane. Just pulled up to eat a sandwich. I've just noticed on this car it says no days off, which is Andrew's motto, zero days off. <laughs> what a weird coincidence. <laughs> So we came into Windward and it's literally absolutely full of graffiti everywhere. It's so cool, everyone's just colourful. <laughs> Everywhere you look, you see these all bright graffiti, so I think my colours match it. <laughs> it's amazing. How crazy it is around here. Yeah. Just filled with graffiti. checking his, um, his little directional cards. We're probably about 36, 37 miles in. He's just seen the crew um, director and he's just, just ran with us for a little bit, just to try and tell us which way for us to go. Don't, don't know if we still get it, but we're getting there. Oh,
so we're just waiting for her <clears throat> to go back home. Um, I think we're on the Venetian Bridge, I think. I can't find Andrew. We've just done the um, checkpoint four, but I had to go do my mile to keep my streak. <laughs> Um, and when I got back on the bike, I just can't seem to find them. I think it's been about five miles, so I'm planning on maybe getting to the other side of this bridge, and then once I get to the other side, I'll just wait and see if he comes over, because surely he couldn't have come past that many miles before me or something, so let's see how it goes, but yeah, just waiting. It's starting to get really hot, I think I'm quite burnt. <laughs> Basically, I don't even know where he is now. Where is he? Okay, I don't know where he's gone. I'll go find him. One minute. Hey, so we have found Andrew. I'll go show you where he is. Where is he? Should it? Yep, we found Andrew. Here he is. Um, I think he's just putting, um, getting some water. Yeah, so basically, when I went to the other side of that bridge, um, he it turned out that he got lost a little bit and he decided to get some food in somewhere while he got lost. So, luckily, he literally just came past me. I didn't have to like, try and backtrack to find him. Um, so yeah, now I think we're going into this uh, Miami South Beach. It's getting really hot now, so I don't know what the temperature is, but it's absolutely boiling. I don't know if you can see, but I've had to change my t-shirt into one of Andrew's ones because my shoulders got absolutely burned. Come <laughs> was on his head. My shoulders got absolutely burned, so I've had to change my t-shirt. Um, yeah, and my legs and my everything's just burnt. Can you see how red that is there? But yeah. So we've just got to mile 50. I don't know if you can see that, but it's mile 51. We're coming back over the bridge. We've just been to South um, Miami Beach. And all the cruises are in, I don't even know, but they're leaving the <laughs> it looks like on this side it's all sunny and then on this side we're headed back so cloudy so we're thinking there's going to be a, a lot of thunder and lightning but it will be good because he needs to do it now so I think rain will do us a bit of good but for thunder we need to um, cover up <laughs> Since we've been here, it's usually started raining by about like three o'clock, but it's like I think it's around six ish, um, and it's only just started raining, so it's in a sense it's good. Um, but yeah, so we're just trying to get to checkpoint five, and that's mile 72. We're on mile 61, I think, it's so about another like 11 miles to go. I'm trying to pace him with the bike. <laughs>
the rain's um, finally stopped and literally, luckily, as you were saying, we're getting, wanting to get a coffee. We just came past a little coffee, so we just got two double espressos and now we're back. Oh, sugar. <laughs> and now we're back on the road. Not long till we get to the checkpoint five now. <laughs> Hi, it's um, 6.50am and um, yeah, sorry I didn't do any videos through the night, um, basically long story short, it was like absolutely crazy, like wind and rain, like to the extreme, my charger broke so my phone is on like 3%, um, I've only just managed to actually dub a honey. And we've managed to survive. Oh, and I lost Andrew for like an hour and a half as well. So that was a nightmare, but I'll fill you in on that when we finish the race. But yeah, we're 91 miles in. Um, 100 miles to the, to the next checkpoint. And we're going strong. I'm so happy that the land is absolutely this beautiful now. Have you hit the 100? Good, okay, I'll try and get faster ahead. <laughs> I do. <laughs> Hope y'all take it. Yeah, Layla crewed the whole way on the bike, 100 miles. There he is. All the way from across the pond, from Liverpool. Andrew Kelly, finishing up the 100. Thank you. All right, third male. Strong work. I'm curious, how, how much bonus did you get? What's your total mileage? Um, only the chief. Only. I see his stuff, but I just don't get her. So he was tagging me. He was relentless with the training. <laughs> zero days off, no days off. So I was like, <laughs> when he finishes, I got to ask him if he took any days off. Because <laughs> this run counted yesterday, I want to get home back to the Airbnb. Get some more yeah. All right. I love it. I love it. All right, man. In the weather, Kelly is where you guys are going.